slide presentation for Oracle Coherence. My name is David Guy and I'm a developer on the Coherence product and I will talk about the new features in 3.6 for related to security. This is an overview. The, we have new security examples that show all of the features that I'm about to talk about. Uh, and <coughs> probably the best way to learn them is to go get those examples and go through the code. There's little snippets of code I show in this presentation. Those are all taken. They're either taken directly from those security examples or maybe a subset of something from those security examples. So that's the way to start. The main new feature is pluggable, pluggable security token or making you able to control your own identity handling. Uh, subject scoping and a new ability easier, make it easier to do authorization and SSL. This is the link for the security examples and they, the security examples include all these different pieces. It's really just a few features but a lot of little pieces that go together to make it work. The only thing that's not shown in these examples that is covered are, that is covered in the slides is SSL. I do want to emphasize that the code that is shown in the examples is very simplified, just to show you how to hook everything together. It is does not follow good security practice and should not be just taken and put into production. You need to really review exactly what you're doing with security. But it will show you how you can get started. From a client point of view, and first of all, I should emphasize that this, these, these features are between coherence, clients, and extend. The coherence extend protocol, meaning, meaning client to proxy. These features, except for SSL, do not apply to the cluster side of things. So it's a way of adding new security features to clients to a proxy. First of all, on a cl the client code is, doesn't really require any special knowledge of, of, of coherent security features. You would have authentication done in the client just the way you normally have authentication done, however you're presently doing that, or of course, obviously, you could add new authentication code. Then you need to make calls in the context of the identity, so such in Java as a subject do as, or in .NET with a principal <coughs> on the current thread. You will have ability to control a security token, but it should be completely invisible to the client code. This is all just happening behind the scenes. One other feature is that cache references, when, the, when it's configured with the subject scoping, will be associated, cache and service, remote cache and remote service references will be associated with that subject from the subject you as. And I have more details about that later. So here's some really simple uh, example of client code. There's a, it starts with a login, in which case in the real world you would do some real authentication. And the examples have a very simple version of authentication. <clears throat> and then this is the, the next section here is just normal Java subject do as with a privileged exception action to get the cache. And that cache reference, what the cache factory get cache returns, is now associated with a subject, with that subject in the subject do as. So now that, that's just what a client does. And as I said, there's nothing special about that code. That's just normal Java code. But what's happening behind the scenes is that the client is, can, is, will produce a security token. There's an interface, a pluggable interface for the, called the Identity Transformer that allows you to produce that token. So the, it's, a, it's a one method interface, transform identity. You will be past the subject that's, associ that's associated with a security context, the subject and that subject do as. And this allows you to take that subject and do whatever you need to do to produce a security token. You can ignore that subject or you can get information from that subject however you see fit. What you return, that object from tr transform identity, has to be serializable, but it can be any serializable type. And if you want to do some type that coherence does not know how to serialize, you would have to use a custom serializer to handle that. The token will only pass, be passed to the proxy when a connection is opened or a new channel is opened for an existing connection. Coherence multiplexes channels over existing connections, which is a TCP IP connection. There is a default identity transformer. There's always an identity transformer. You can substitute your own for the default one. The default one simply returns the subject that it's passed. This code shows you a simple implementation of a transform identity, an identity transformer that 
passes a password. This is a way of pr password protecting a coherence proxy. So this is the token is essentially a password produced on the client. There's a little more information that, that I'll describe uh, shortly. So in this particular code, <coughs> you, you can look at it more thoroughly by downloading the examples code. The security token is just simply an array of strings. The first element of that array is, is the password. The second element is the username. And then there's some role, role names that are passed along. The, of course, this is very simplified. You would not normally pass a password in clear text over the network. But this is just to show you how to hook things in. So the, on the proxy side, you have the opportunity to do something with that security token and turn it back into a subject. So the, again, it's a one method interface, the identity asserter, called assert identity. It just passes that token that was serialized and then deserialized on the proxy side. The security token from the client may be null. In the case, if, in the case this operation happens without a subject do as, without any security context, that, that's fairly normal. You have to handle that if you're allowing that in your code. Um, the token is asserted by which it means you, you, you validate it. You decide what to do with it. Now, it's completely up to you, you know, what's the appropriate thing to do. You have to produce some kind of subject or a null, uh, but you may typically you know, break down this token into something useful. You may validate this token. It, for example, it could be a Kerberos ticket that you check or some other, some other kind of ass assertion of identity that you have a way of checking, and then you can turn it into a subject. Here's, a, here's the other side of the password where it, it basically checks the password. So the, as I said earlier, it's a array of strings. It's checking that the, the first password matches, the first melanin of the array matches. It gets the username that it uses to create the subject, and subsequent elements as are role names. I'm going to show a little bit later a, a very, very simple role-based access control. So the purpose of the identity asserter is to validate, and it solves a trust issue because the normal security practice, you can't trust a token that you received over the wire. You don't really know where it came from. You can't really, you, you want to be able to prove that it, it can be trusted, and that's what the role of the identity asserter is. I've just got this token off the wire. Now I can check to see if it's really valid, if, it really, if I can actually trust the identity that it's asserting. And this is performant because it only happens once per connection or once per channel open. So it's, it does not happen repeatedly. The subject scoping I mentioned, and this is configurable, this is an option, means that what, is, what happens is that every time a, someone gets a cache or gets a service on the client side, and then from then in, in the, with a security context, in other words, a, a subject do as, then that cache reference is permanently associated with that subject. So that means that any actions, any operations for that cache or service will be done on behalf of that subject. And the reason you want, would want to do this is so that you can do authorization in the, in the proxy. Otherwise, so you have to be careful in, in your code. You, you can't just hand off these cache references to any thread or to anybody using it because it's now, it, it'll, it's now being associated with that particular identity. So you want to make sure that you use it only for that subject. Um, 